Louise Kosh and I am from Denmark up in the north. Uh, actually, we're not that high. We're just a little bit like around the level of England. So it's not like we have polar bears in the streets or anything. And right now we're actually having summer. And um, that means that we have a lot of stuff available. We got really great fruits and veggies here and we can even grow some of our own stuff. So for example, this and this is something that I grew in my garden. And uh, today we are going to make, <coughs> excuse me, raw vegan spaghetti bolognese. And um, some of you might remember when you were younger and you had it with your family. And, you know, it's just this cozy feel of a winter's day. And I know it's not really a summer dish, but we're going to make it anyway because it just tastes amazing. And I thought I would share it with you. And um, yeah, I have been eating raw vegan, high raw at least for 10 years or more. And I did it for health reasons. And today I just cannot stop because I absolutely love it. And during those 10 years, I've been trying to create various recipes. And I've also just thought some of the recipes that I've had other people make for me they weren't quite good enough. I thought I can do that better. So my challenge has always been to take classic recipes and try to make them taste like the real thing or even better. And that way encourage people to eat raw. So hopefully this dish today is going to inspire you in that regard and, uh, and know that you can eat raw stuff that is just as good as the cooked or even better. So um, yeah, let's see. Today we are going to use various things. I've laid them out here for you and you hopefully you have them as well if you are going to follow me. So two zucchinis or squash in Danish. I don't know what you call them. One spring onion, a bell pepper, a mango. I hope it's good. Otherwise I have a backup. <laughs> you never know with these guys. Then we have some mushrooms. I wrote five in the recipe, but depending on the size, you might want to use a little bit more, a little bit less. And then the optional garlic, if you want to use it or not, that's up to you. And some rosemary. This one is organic rosemary. And then I have thyme from the garden. I picked it a couple of days ago and let it dry. I could have used it fresh as well, but I had said, yeah dry thyme so I thought I would let it dry and then some pine nuts here and I set a tea sorry a spoonful so there is exactly a spoonful in my little dish here and apart from that we have some herbs and this is oregano fresh from the garden and if you don't have it fresh then you can use like dried as well that's totally fine and the same goes for basil I bought a basil here and uh, organic, of course. I always try to get as much organic as possible. And then you can use dried basil if you don't have fresh basil. So yeah, those were the ingredients. And just so that you can get hold of all the equipment we're gonna use. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna show you what we're gonna use. So the, the zucchinis, we're gonna make them into some kind of pasta. And you can choose how you're gonna do that. So if you have a spiralizer like this, that would be amazing. But I know a lot of people don't have one. So what you can do is just use a normal potato peeler because then you can make like fettuccine like uh, spaghetti. Or if you have like a durian peeler like this, then you can also use that. That makes them really, really thin. It's not as spaghetti-like, but it's still usable. So those are the best options, alternatives. Then, if you do have a grater, we can use that at the very end for some decoration. And this one is a nice to have, but not need to have. It's a mango cutter. I'm gonna show you later how to use it. But if you don't have one, it doesn't matter. You can just Cut it with a knife, that's totally fine. And uh, this one we're going to use for the blender, a spatula that, yeah, you normally use for cooking so, uh, or baking. 
So I'll put that there. And I think that was it. Yep, yeah, a knife, a chopping board, maybe a little spoon. And uh, we're gonna use some utensils for the balls later, but I'm sure you have them fairly close. Right, okay. So that was uh, the ingredients and the machinery, so to speak. And um, this is the point where I need to remind you to wash your hands. I already washed mine. And to also wash, wash all the vegetables if you haven't done it yet. So go wash now. <laughs> and um, we're gonna separate it kind of into two piles because some of it is going to be used for a liquid sauce and some of it is going to be used for a chunky part of the sauce. So actually it's three parts. So it's, there's the, the spaghetti itself, there is the chunky bits and the liquid bits. And um, yeah, let's see. For the liquid, well, the, the zucchini of course is for the spaghetti. And then it's easiest to take away the, um, the stuff for the the liquid bit, and that's the mango, and a third of the tomatoes, and the sun-dried tomatoes. Sorry, yeah, the soaked sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm gonna put this over here by the blender and use it later. And I hope you had time to soak your sun-dried tomatoes. Mine has been soaking since this morning. And the reason why I soak them is to get the salt out of them, because it's so rare that you can find sun-dried tomatoes without salt. It's almost impossible. It can happen, but most of them have salt in it. And this is technically a salt-free kitchen. So I just try to soak them to yeah, get it out. And they also kind of digest better when they're soaked. So there. And then if you got cherry tomatoes like me, you could perhaps like count 30 of them. And then just take 10 of them all away and use them for the, 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 the chunky bit. So let me see. One, two, three. I can teach you to count in Danish. One, two, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That was 10. <laughs> so I'll keep the rest for the liquid sauce. Yeah, there. And um, we're gonna be chopping a lot. And just to make sure you don't chop off your fingers, I just wanna teach you the method in case you don't know it. So some people, let's say you took this, they would just hold your fingers straight and chop. And then you slightly get chopped sausages when you chop off your fingers. So we don't want that. <laughs> So instead, you're gonna curl your fingers like this. So not straight, but curl them like this. And then the chance of chopping off your fingers is way less, okay? So like I said, it's gonna be a lot of chopping, so you really wanna do this, and uh, I hope I don't forget. <laughs> right, let's see. Okay, are you all ready to go? Let's do thumbs up. More thumbs We're up. We're ready. We're ready. Awesome. Louise, go ahead. Awesome. Let's start cooking raw then. <laughs> so first up, we are gonna peel these. Technically, these are organic, so we could use them with the peel on. But for the sake of the presentation, it actually looks more spaghetti like when they're white. So I'm gonna peel mine. So let's peel the zucchini. And uh, just so you know, I have this little bucket here that I'm gonna, yeah, take all the garbage out, so to speak, and compost it in my garden so that everything gets recycled. And that's why I'm gonna just peel it straight into the bowl. <laughs> and um, whoop, if I can hit it. And this, like the potato peeler has to be a good one. This one is quite rough fish to be honest but I didn't have another one I don't peel potatoes that often <laughs> um, but yeah I hope you are all starting to peel your zucchini and uh, let's see 
when you do this dish, it is so important that all the ingredients are tasty. So that's one of the reasons why I always get organic, if possible, because they simply taste better. Um, and especially for this dish, the tomatoes, if you can get really sweet cherry tomatoes, that would make a huge difference. So uh, yeah, let me see, I think I got one. How are you guys doing? You got it peeled? You're probably quicker than me with a better peeler. Luis, if I have um, this zucchini squash, I don't have to peel it since it will add to the color, right? Right, right. If it's yellowish, yeah, you should be fine. Okay. There. Oops. Roughly. Okay. And right. I'm just going to peel the other one now that I'm at it as well. So this is where we're going to do a little song and a dance and uh Fly me to the moon and let me sing upon the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, take my hand. In other words, darling, kiss me. You can sing along if you want. <laughs> Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I'd long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. And that was exactly the length of a zucchini peel. Peeling there. Okay. So I have a question for you. Sure. <clears throat> Every chef has their own way of doing things. Are you, are you about to cut off the top and tail of these zucchinis? Oh and yeah. Is there, and is there a reason you didn't do that first? It's kind of because I can hold on to them more and, and peel higher, but I don't know. I didn't really think about whether I should do it beforehand or not. Well, you um, usually do it the way you did it, I'm assuming. I, I think I do. But, not, you know, there, there's not a right or a wrong way. It's just everybody right. has their own. I wondered if you had a reason. I always cut mine first. Right, right. Well, the, the thing is, when I do this, length. when I do this uh, dish on my own, yes, I don't care if it's green on the outside. So I just eat the whole thing. So it's very <laughs> rare. It's very rare that I peel them. But I thought for today's show, I would peel them. It looks nicer peeled. Sorry. It's more appealing. Oh, for sure. I, I missed some bits <laughs> that didn't make the bucket. <laughs> okay, so next up, like that says, we're going to cut off the ends. And if you do have a spiralizer like this, you want to try and get them as, what do you call that? Parallel. Um, parallel as possible. So let's <laughs> see. Like that. I just made them look like... It's actually perpendicular, Dr. Graham. No, parallel to each other is what's important. There. The two, like the two cuts want to be parallel to each other, Larissa. Okay. It right. should do fairly okay. <clears throat> so, next up, I am going to use a plate for this. Oh, there we go. And for those who have never seen or used the spiralizer before, it's basically a blade that slides in here. And there's some extra blades here. And this bit just comes in and out. So I'm just gonna turn the handle and it's gonna spiralize the zucchini for me. Um, there. So let's see. And there is a circular thingy there that is important to get it right in the middle and put this one in the middle as well and then you just go la 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 and make spaghetti <laughs> wheat free gluten free it doesn't get any healthier okay. Doug, do 
do you have like any favorite ingredients that you normally put in your tomato sauce? I have my favorites and Rosie yeah. has hers. So it depends if I'm making for me or her. Okay. For me, I would, for me, I would add fennel. Uh, right. Wine. Um, and Fine. Yeah. For Rosie, she wants oregano. So it just, it's going to depend who I'm making for. Never tried with fennel. All right. Okay, that was the first one. And then you're left with this funny thing. Woo! <laughs> um, I'm gonna save it, we're gonna use a little bit later. Um, and the next one. There. And I hope you guys are Peeling away or doing whichever. I can see there's somebody else with a spiralizer there. Louisa? Yeah? What is the Danish name for that instrument you're using now? I think it's also called in spiralizer. Okay. So um, let's just be a little bit more hygienic here. <laughs> and. For this. It is just me who's gonna eat it, so it doesn't really matter, but it looks better. There. You can also get like a an hourglass shaped one. It's like a smaller one that's like this, and you kind of twist it inside of it, so you might be able to get that. I bought this machine online, um, and I don't think many Danish shops, they would have these kind of machines. But. You never know, you might be lucky. Yeah. You can get them on Bed Bath & Beyond for like $20. Right. Oh. It's gonna look like a big portion, what we're making. But actually, the whole recipe is only 500 calories. So you might want to eat some fruit first, um, just to make sure you get enough calorie in that meal. But yeah, there. And that was it. Okay. So, that's your spaghetti. <clears throat> so we're just gonna put that to the side. I don't know if you can see it. And, uh, and leave it there till the sauce is ready. And that's how you make spaghetti. Super easy. Right. Any questions so far? No, right? You're good. <laughs> But so now we're going to start with the chunky oh, part of the dish. Do you cut the noodles or do you serve Sorry? them long? Do you cut the noodles as long as you made them or do you cut them into shorter you could You could cut them now or you could cut them with a knife when you kind of serve the dish or eat the dish. Got it. Either or. Okay. But they are going to be pretty long. <laughs> so... Yeah, maybe take a scissor and cut them just so they're easier to serve. We can do that later. But good point, Doug, for sure. Those are your favorite, Dr. Graham. Yep. These ones are so small, you don't have to cut them. They're just messier. <laughs> okay, so the chunky part of the sauce is all about getting the consistency of a spaghetti bolognese because we know like the normal the meat and onions and whatever they put in there they make it kind of little chunky bits and uh, so I'm going to use especially the mushrooms the bell pepper the tomatoes and the pine seeds to get the chunkiness and um, I think we should just start by chopping up the tomatoes and then placing them in a bowl so all the ingredients now we're just going to chop up and place in a bowl and uh, then later mix it with the liquid part of the sauce. And um, how do I cut my tomatoes? Well, I generally just, 
half them and then I half them again like that. So yeah, eight little bits. I don't know if you could see that, but just make them small, <laughs> depending on your, the size of your tomatoes, of course. And um, if I put this underneath here, maybe you can see what's in the bowl better. There. And Louis, this is group of 20, right? That we're cutting. Ten. The what? The 10 or 20 of them? This is the yeah. 10. Okay, 10. This is the 10 tomatoes. So one third. <clears throat> yeah. And I just find that tomatoes give such an amazing taste to everything. Um, it's almost like any dish, add tomatoes, and it's just going to be amazing, <laughs> especially <clears throat> if the tomatoes are sweet. So there, and it's kind of hard to do this technique right now because they're so small, but I will be doing it later. Um, but I kind of just do this and then turn it, try to hold it so I don't cut off my fingers. Whoop. And just, yeah. Be careful, <clears throat> especially if you have a very sharp knife. knife. And um, there, 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 there. And I can tell you a little story that <clears throat> I made this recipe on my retreats and everybody loved it except one guy. He was like, Louise, this looks too much like the real thing. When I eat it, I expect the meaty, normal taste, and it tastes different, and it does. Wow. Of course, we can't get the exact same taste. And he's like, my brain is just confused. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of funny. Yeah, but. As you might know, like spaghetti bolognese is an absolute classic in a raw vegan kitchen. It's so easy to make. You could even make it just with tomatoes and yeah, just with tomatoes and spring onions or basil. And, and then it's going to taste amazing. <laughs> I just like to add all these little herbs and spices to make it, you know, more like the, the real thing. The, original so to speak italian style how far are you guys with the chopping of the tomatoes looking right. good you ready awesome because next up we're gonna chop the bell pepper <clears throat> i don't want to progress too fast if anybody is still chopping tomatoes are you good okay well how to attack a bell pepper. The secret okay. in my opinion, is to remove the stem first and just pull it out. So I'm gonna try and do this without cutting myself, but just like make a little circle around the stem and see if it gets loose so that you can remove it like that. Whoop. And there yeah, you have it. And um, next up, there's going to be a lot of like seeds inside, so I just slice it in half, and then I try to remove the seeds by hand here. There. And the reason why I chose red bell pepper is just because it's going to help make the sauce nice and red. But uh, you could, of course, use green or yellow. It doesn't really matter. Okay. There. And um, next up, we are just gonna like make little squares or little bits out of this bell pepper. So I'm just gonna, again, this is why you wanna use this technique with your bent fingers. Uh, make slices first. Yeah. It's, very interesting to be talking while you're food prepping. I normally don't do that. So it's, um, you got to focus about. not to cut your fingers. I hope you guys are more focused. So there, that was one. And here, 
We don't want to have to run for a band-aid or something. <laughs> Louis, the bell pepper goes into the sauce, right? Yes, everything we're making now is going to go into the sauce. So this is for the chunky part of the sauce. And now I'm just going to try to make them all lie in line, like that. And then cut them from the end. And I like to use a really thick knife because it's kind of easier, like if it's a really thin one, my hand hits the chopping board really quickly. So I'm, I just kind of like the, the wide knives for this. Yeah. <clears throat> and it might be easier if I take smaller portions, actually. <laughs> there. Then you can use this technique that you just put your hand on the knife and just go to choo -choo 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 -choo. and the sharper the knife, the better it's going to be. I know, Doc, on your retreats, um, you do a lot of knife skill teaching, right? Yes. It's super important. Do you have any tips for using a knife other um. than... Yeah, the term the term I would use is choke up. If your if your right hand was closer to the blade than it is, you'll have more control. Right. If you, if you slide your finger down the blade, your your right finger. Yeah. You you want me to hold it here? No, closer to the blade, not the handle. Go the other way. As far as you can go. There. Like this. Yes. Then put your finger on top. Uh huh. Yep. You'll have more control the, from there than you did from way right. back from the handles. Nice. Thanks for the tip, Doug. Sure. Look at what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, better. <laughs> okay. So you'll definitely feel you'll not only have more control, but you'll also have more power on each stroke. Right. When your hand is back on the handle. It's the opposite. I think I got mine chopped pretty well. And uh, this is the part where we just put it into the bowl. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, you, you were meticulous in removal of seeds because do they affect the flavor in some way? Yeah, I just don't like to chew them myself. There you go. Okay. I so guess. So I don't texture. know. It's texture, Would not you guys flavor. Put them in? No, I removed them, but I wondered true, why true. you did. For everyone else to yeah. understand, sometimes it's about flavor, sometimes I never it's did, I never found them appealing to, to chew, so. Okay, are uh, you guys, yeah, with me so far? So far, so good. Yeah, I so hope so, so, because now we're, we we're moving on. And uh, next up, we're gonna do the spring on. And, I first remove the roots. I washed it beforehand. And this is the part where if this has been, had been 10 years ago, I would do like this and only use this part. But today I know better that we can actually use all of it. Of course, if it's going bad at the very top or something, I would cut that away. But we can use everything, like even the very top of the onion. And uh, I would just half it, lay it next to each other, and then use the same technique, chop it into little bits. Let's see if I can use it more like Doug suggests. And... I prefer spring onions to normal onions in the raw kitchen because normal, like big onions, they're just too strong basically. But spring onions, they are nice and soft and uh, it does, they don't make you cry like the other ones, so they're more gentle. And this knife is clearly not good enough because <laughs> they're still in one piece, so I'm gonna do some extra chopping here. There. Yeah. 
Though I must say, I can feel a little uh, spiciness in my eye right now, but uh, nothing like if it was big onions. So if I'm crying in a second, you know why. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yep. And put it in the bowl. I'm totally crying. <laughs> I was too quick to say that. Wow. Mm. I got to get some tissue here. <laughs> Wow. I hope you're not as bad hit as I am. <laughs> Anybody else crying? No? <laughs> no. I think you have a potent oh. one. No makeup down my cheek? No. Nope. All right. Okay. So then we have something that's way more safe to, to cut and that's the mushrooms and uh you could use brown mushrooms or white ones like here it doesn't really matter and i wrote five in the recipe and i have six here because one was kind of on the smaller side and it's it all adds to the chunkiness so i just thought i'll take six if you have six that's fine if you only have five that's perfect as well and uh i washed them and uh, i'm just gonna cut down cut off the uh oil, earth part because we don't want to eat the, the dirt. So there. And I'm still crying. <laughs> Can I share something I found when I went shopping? It's organic sun-dried tomato every with herbs and everything in it in a little paste for like $3. It's kind of cool. I don't typically buy it, but it's just something fun to eat, squirt in there for everything that you're putting in if you don't have access to herbs otherwise fresh is best for sure yeah so what i'm doing with the uh the mushroom here is just chopping it into smaller bits do it whatever way you like doesn't really matter oh didn't remove all the soil here yes and i have a tip about the crying if you wet your knife with the cold water it minimizes it Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I heard a tip that if you leave the water running while you cut, then it should also minimize it. But uh, hopefully I'll be happy soon. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yes, Judy, Judy shared with us also, Louise, that if we have our mouth shut when we're cutting, that you probably won't tear as much. Uh, which isn't a, right? isn't a tip I've heard before, but it might if be I have like, what? if you're not talking while you're cutting, if you have your mouth shut, right? which was difficult for you to do and teach at the same time. So it might be why you're having more of a reaction than you kind of. do. <laughs> <laughs> what if you uh, rinse the onion off or take a bite of it first? Ha <laughs> ha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I'll... Try to shut up next time I cut onions. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Even my nose is running now. <laughs> oh, well, that's the, what do you call it? Hazards of food prep. <laughs> there. So I got some chunks of mushroom and the same, put it back into the bowl. There. <clears throat> and there and there <clears throat> then we're gonna have a cup of fresh basil and like i said if you don't have fresh you can just take uh dry maybe half a spoonful or something that's fine and uh, i'm just gonna pick like a lot of this i like to not use all of it and then just have it in my kitchen and it'll regrow so I always have it around but uh, I put it into smaller bits here so I can see how much a cup is and 
So when I take the, the traps off, I always find like a, a joint. <clears throat> so let's say I cut it right there. Then these little bits, I don't know if you can see it, they're gonna go big again. But um, yeah, it's just a little fun tip. So I'm gonna cut it at the bottom one there. <clears throat> And the same here, cut it at the bottom one, the bottom one, like that. So there's still some leaves on the plant. Okay. And there. Okay. Let's see, let's isn't that a cupful? So next up, I will just chuck this as well into smaller bits. And if you use the dry stuff, of course you can't, but uh, it's just to get, again, some texture in the dish. It's super important. There. But also when you chop it, you kind of enhance the flavor of the basil. Okay. Is everybody with me so far? Because if you are, you're doing really good. Yes, good speed, Louise, very good, thank you. Great. Okay, and add that to the mix. Okay. <clears throat> that was half a cup of basil. And then we're going to have a handful of fresh oregano, oregano in Danish. And um, basically, I just picked this in the garden. So how much is a handful? Well, I'll remove the, uh, the leaves from the stems, and then I'll see how much I can have in hand. But it doesn't really matter that much. Just as much as you like, and it's all going to add to the flavor. And because this is fresh, the stem is really stiff. So what I'll do is I'll just slide it downwards like that and then the leaves come off really easily and throw the stems away because they don't taste very good or yeah, chew very well. So like that, the very top you can eat, that's kind of soft, but uh, <clears throat> definitely only want the leaves from this. The basil is different. You can eat the stems as well because they're really soft, but not with the oregano. And, to be honest, if you are using money to buy oregano and you have like a garden or a living room where you can grow stuff, um, then just go grow oregano because it's the easiest plant ever. It's almost like a weed, like I have it everywhere. Um, it plants itself, it takes over all the other plants. Um, so you kind of have to like keep it um, secluded to make sure it doesn't run off. Um, but that and lemon melissa are two of the easiest things to, to grow for sure. Like, and mint, of course. I don't know, does any of you grow your own stuff? Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Sure, for sure, yeah. Great. That's like such a great way to save money and just have more fun with your food. And uh, let's see, this is probably a handful. You know what, I'm just gonna chuck everything in there. It's pity to let it go to waste. And like with the basil, I'm just gonna chop it a bit into smaller bits. And uh, like in general, when you make dishes, whether it's raw or cooked or even conventional, you know, with meat in it, 
it is always the herbs that are giving the taste to the dish. And so if you learn how to combine the herbs right and use the right ones, you're going to get amazing tasting dishes, regardless of whether it's raw or cooked or vegan or not. So I use so many herbs, even in my smoothies. Like if those of you who knows me, like I'm a green smoothie girl and I love to put herbs in my smoothies. Maybe I can do a, a green smoothie demonstration sometime and, uh, and add some herbs. But uh, yeah, I think this is getting good. There. Whoop. It's very green right now. <laughs> we could save some of the, the greens for the saucy bit, actually. It's up to you. But um, just to blend them in to enhance the taste, because when we blend it, it's going to taste even stronger. You can see if you can put a little bit of the oregano and basil on the side and maybe put some of that in the blender when we blend. Right. And uh, so let's see. Um, pine nuts. Easy. One spoonful goes in. And the um, rosemary. One. Sorry. Thyme. This is the thyme. Pinch however much you like. And this is the rosemary. I'm just going to use half a little teaspoon of rosemary there. Oh, and a leaf that got away. We can use that for decoration. And for those of you who want the garlic in, I'm not going to put it in mine, but this is where you want to chop it now as well. So peel it, chop it into tiny chunks. I can show you how. If you want, um, and here I just started by cutting the end off and then I peeled it away like that. And from here on, I normally slice it. I don't know if you can see it. I hold it on the long side and I slice it like that. Mm. And maybe two slices. Whoops, so I get three of these. Mm -hmm. Put them back as they were, slice them the other way around, like horizontally this way. And then I take them all on the long end and do the smaller ones. Maybe you guys have an easier way. Of course, if you have one of those squeezers, it's it's easier to just complete the squeeze. But, uh, okay. Yep, I'll just put it here instead of in the dish. And then, yeah, the, the compost can have it. Um, I just don't do well with garlic, so. <clears throat> I love it though. It tastes amazing, but I don't eat very much of it. And, um, that's it. Let, let me just check my little list here. <clears throat> yeah, it says mix. So uh, let's uh, just take one of these and uh, stir it up. Like that. And this is where it's going to be really colorful. And I forgot to take a little bit of the greenery, so to speak, aside. I can still do that like that and if you didn't make it if you were as quick as i am don't worry about it it's still gonna be good <clears throat> there hey and if like you want it chunkier you can also add maybe some chunks of carrot or corn like anything that just makes it a little bit chunky that you would normally put in spaghetti bolognese i you could put in there. Um, yeah, so now it's uh, the blending part. And uh, I've got my little Vitamix here. Any blender will do, you'll be fine. For that, we have the ingredients that we set aside here. So the sun dried tomatoes, the mango, and the tomatoes. You got it all? 
All ready? So let's just do the easy part and put in the tomatoes. You don't have to cut them or anything. Just pour them right in. And then we can do the same with the sun-dried tomatoes if you want, like if you have a less good blender and you didn't soak them very long, you could chop them into smaller bits and put them in, but uh, normally not needed, and then throw away the salty water. And finally, the mango. And I promised to show you the mango cutter. So it's just something that, yeah, with a piece of iron in the middle that goes around the seed and then place the mango with the seed horizontally. I don't know if you can say that, but like on the long, I, I know the seed goes this way because it's thicker this way than it is that way. I guess it just takes some practice to, to see. But uh, you place it the direction of the seed and then you just squeeze it down on top like that. Some mangoes are too big and it doesn't work, but uh, these ones are pretty good for this. And then voila. Uh, a little bit from the, the seed in the middle, a stone. I don't know what you call it, seed or stone. But um, <clears throat> that would be perfect. And then a spoon for scooping all the flesh out there and just add the flesh to the blender and yeah another option instead of the mango is to use uh, dates so if you don't have mangoes just add some dates maybe i don't know 10 dates or something five to ten dates because it makes it a little bit sweet. So if you like that, then for sure go for dates. But if you like more savory dishes, mm, you don't put any like sweet things in there. I just, I like the mango taste the best and it helps it makes it, making it creamy as well. So there, and I'll just cut this bit out and with mangoes, it can be really hard to know if they're good or not, if they're sour or sweet or gone bad. And personally, I when I shop for mangoes, I just go to lots of different stores and try different varieties and see like, what are they like at the moment? And then the ones that are the best, that's the supermarket I go to. And then eventually that variety is gonna be out of season. And then I have to do it all over again and just run around and test all of them again and see how they are. And then, yeah, just <laughs> mango testing big time because you want good mangoes. Some of them, you know, they go rotten really quickly. They never ripen, they're very stringy. And in Denmark, I found that this variety is really good right now. Whereas, um, let me see. These guys, they're more on the sour, sour side at the moment. I just bought these to test, so you can tell the difference. These were the sweet ones right now, and these were the sour ones, but they might get sweeter later in the season, we'll see. Um, so yeah, oh, and the trick. So you have this pit in the middle, and what I do is I take the spoon, and I just kind of cut it like that, and then I scoop the end bits out like that. And again, a spoon. And of course, if you didn't have a mango cutter, I would just cut the cheeks off. I should have said that. So I would just like cut again along the this, this seed on each side like that. And uh, then I would take a knife and go around the, the seed. What do you call it? A seed or a, a stone? The mm. Stone fruit has have stones. Okay, so it's a stone, right? No, so, it's a seed. So I would uh, cut around the stone, cut this in half, and then scoop this away with a spoon, and cut this off with the knife, and yeah, use this with a spoon. So this was the my dessert. <laughs> We're not going to use that, but um, the one I was doing already. So I just kind of 
cut the little bits into the blender. You can cut it onto the chopping board if you like. Um, it doesn't really matter. I sometimes drop the pit or the, the stone there. But just get as much off as you can. And there. there. And there. And you can just like suck the, <laughs> the, the stone afterwards if you like. And this is the last bit almost. So we're going to add the herbs if you saved a few just to enhance the taste. And uh, now we're going to blend the liquid part and then I'll get back to you what we're going to do with the, the other bit. So we're going to try it without any water. I think it's going to be fine. And uh, there. And any speed is good. Don't blend yet. It's very important. And right now the, the sauce is not really red. And it's gonna go brown. And basically that's what we kind of want because the meaty version of this dish is more or less brown. So it's it doesn't look super appealing, but if you do want a really red sauce, if you want to make it spaghetti, sorry, tomato sauce like, um, then you can, for example, add some beetroot, but don't add too much. Then it's go, gonna go like purplish. <laughs> but yeah, beetroot for some more red color. And um, you can kind of stir it up a little bit just to make sure it's evenly distributed. And there. Now we are going to blend at a very, very low pace and um, very, very short, just for a few seconds. So I don't want all the chunky bits to go liquid. I want the chunky bits to be in there and that's why I'm going to blend really short. So. Okay, and maybe put it on a low setting as well. <laughs> Put this away from. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we are almost there. Let me clear this out. And make a nice presentation. There. Are you guys ready? You blend it? I hope so. Yes, we're good. Yes, you did. So one tip is, if you're not gonna eat it right away, then you leave the first part of the sauce sit for a couple of minutes, then there's gonna be water forming, and then you pour the water out before you blend the last, the last bit. But I'm assuming you're eating fairly quickly, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, for the presentation, this is why you need this, the scissor. And you just kind of cut it. <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna be sharing with your family or are you gonna eat it all?
but you could eat it potentially straight from the bowl or you could serve it nicely. Uh, there. And so I've organized it a little bit on the, to the right of me on the plate. And then I'm gonna pour it over here and a little bit on top. So not all of it, but just some of it. Yeah, and then there's more sauce for the next portion. And this is where we put the Parmesan cheese on. So remember I said, if you had one of these, you can uh, grate a little bit of the zucchini on top to make it look like it's Parmesan with one of these middle thingies. There. And then Finally, you take some of the leaves from the plant, if you still have some green ones left. Anything that's green, or it can be tomatoes, bell pepper, whatever you have lying around, that you can make a nice presentation out of. And there, well, maybe not that many. Forest gift, there. And there you have it, Italian style raw vegan spaghetti bolognese.